an amazing crowd. Think about this, over 20,000 entrepreneurs in this center on a Saturday afternoon. Talk about being committed. God bless all of you. Just go out and do it. What an amazing weekend it's been, right? An amazing weekend and our final day together. This day is going to, just buckle your seatbelts. You're in for a fast ride. Are you guys ready? Are you tired? Okay, good. Are you guys okay up there? Yes. Of course you are. What about over there? Yes. Well, you know, Lauren, it wasn't just, you know, three years ago when most people didn't even know what a hashtag was or the power of the hashtag. It's true. It's now, all of a sudden, we've been trending every single day on Facebook. Yes, have you guys every seen that? Every day. day we are trending on Facebook using the MAWC 2015 hashtag. So that's super important. We're going to talk about that later, right? Right, because it's, I mean, you know, it's all about the power of the people, and that's what we have yeah, the best it's, of. It's, it's true. And you know, we're going to get right into this presentation. We've got something a little bit different for you today. Right. And talk about the, the, the importance of not only just using social media, but where to use it and why to use it in certain places. So we're going to jump right in. Right. right. So social commerce. Social media is more than just an information gathering. It's now become big business. The stock market, everybody now, the worldwide, they focus in on Facebook, they focus in on the Twitters, the LinkedIn. No longer are they focusing in on the IBMs, the Exxons of the world. This is where commerce is happening today. Over the last few years, we've seen it climb up. This is going to just continuously increase. Right now, um, it's projected that $14 billion will be done on Facebook and other social media sites. This is going to continue to grow as more and more sites become mobile friendly and mobile enabled. Almost 5% of all sales that are done are, um, for online retail are done through social media. Well, but you know of, what? It's, that's a lot of money when you're talking about how much was it? 14, 14 billion. billion. 14, bi $14 billion, 5% of it is done on social media. So wouldn't you like just a little piece of that? We're not talking about like $14 right. or $14 million. We're talking about $14 billion and 5% of that. That's right. That's a lot of money. But you know what? The thing is, is that what makes social media so great is, is that everybody's sharing their problems. Everybody's got a problem that they want you to solve. It's like, walk, it's like a customer walking up to you and they've already shared with you everything they want to buy from you. And it's all about the social listening. Well, that's what it's about. I think a lot of times we, uh, we've talked about the, this in the past, and we don't want to talk about it too much today, but it's all about listening. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're on, online and you're working on social media, you have to be listening to what people are saying in order to be able to fill their needs. And that's what we're going to talk right. about today. Exactly. Now, of course, to create cool content, see what is attracting people and how you can do it better. That's why, again, I'm talking about listening to what people want, listening to what people ask for, so you can easily fill their needs. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm saying? If you're talking to somebody in person and you're not listening to what they're saying, and you just, I have a lot of friends like that too. Sometimes I have friends like you can talk to them, they ask you for your opinion, and they never listen to a damn bit of advice you give them. <laughs> And then you're like, why do I give her the advice? Her, her initials are KK, but, but my point is, my point is that anytime I give her advice, I'm like, why am I even giving it? The point is this, when you're talking to people online, be sure to listen. Mm -hmm. You might not need to use it, but it might be exactly what you need in order to make the sale. And that's what we're talking about today. Absolutely. So it's all about answering the problems that people have without selling and make it fun. You know, so many times you can go on Twitter, you can go on Facebook, and somebody's saying, oh man, I just ran out of this color, you know, lipstick. Well, there you are right there. If you're listening to that conversation, you can now introduce that Modus Cosmetic brand to you. It's happening all over the place. And of course, to amplify your content, you want to utilize each other. 
mm. your friends, employees that work for you. Think about partners, customers, testimonials. So anytime I have something I want to promote, I make sure I tell my team and ask my team to back me up and put it out there. You should be doing the same thing. If you're on the same team, everybody benefits the same. If it's not your customer, it doesn't worry. The BV pays everybody the same. How about not supporting each other? The only thing you have to do is have manners. You know, sometimes we have the ability to lack manners on social media. Manners are very important offline, and they're very important online. And do not go putting your portal on your partner's page. That's not nice. That's not nice. A lot of people hide behind the computer. Oof. It's like all of a sudden it gives them the special badge to just start posting. There's no, no, you don't do anything different online than you do offline. You don't do anything different offline than you do online. I mean online than you do offline. Content is fire, social media is gasoline. Think about it like that. So your content has to be powerful, right? We talk about this all the time. Sometimes Steve and I will spend hours changing one single sentence right. to make it perfect. And we'll test it. Don't expect to get it right the first time. That's right. We test things over and over and over again. You're supposed to make mistakes. And then you can perfect them. So the more you try it, the more you test it, the more you'll get results. And you won't do that if you don't try. That's right. You know, one size doesn't fit all. What you say on Facebook is not what you say on YouTube. Something, you're going to say something different on YouTube than what you're going to say on Instagram, et cetera. Every single um, platform has a different purpose. Yeah. And I love this. You know, this is a really, this slide alone is probably one of the most important slides in the whole presentation. Why? Because you can look at it at a glance and it'll tell you exactly what each social media site means for you. For Steve and I, we simplified this very easy for you. Your Facebook page is your business community. Steve will talk about why in a minute. Your YouTube page is your business show. It's your business show. It's for videos. Your Twitter is your business voice. WordPress is your business website or your blog. LinkedIn is your profile. It tells them who you are, how big you are, what you're doing. Foursquare is your business location. Instagram is your business fashion show. Why? Because we use pictures and Pinterest is your pin, uh, business board. That one slide simplifies how you utilize each one of these social sites. That's right. So now let's talk a little bit about Facebook and why it's for your business. You know, it's all about brand visibility. It's all about getting your name out on the marketplace. But the great thing about Facebook is, is it's that it's free advertising, it's free marketing. As long as you continue to post content, the more and more you're gonna market yourself. It's all about customer interaction or engagement. When somebody writes a post or a comment on something that you just wrote, interact with them, talk with them. That's what's going to keep them engaged. You know, the sharing of information, lead generation, by posting, a, by posting good content, all of that's going to happen. The leads are going to come in and they're going to flow just like, the, just like out of the bean jar. Advertise your um, brand. Lauren's going to talk a little bit about this shortly. And sell, sell, sell. But don't go overselling. Just simply promote what you do, share it in a normal lifestyle, and people are going to respond much better as a result of it. Especially when you're listening to what they want. So if right. you can fill a void or fill a need, then you can sell a product. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Of course, these are just familiar words. We don't really need to talk about things right. that you need to be familiar with that are keywords, buzzwords on Facebook, like, share, comment, delete, mm -hmm. reply with pictures. You know what they are. We're not gonna go through with those, but we put these on here. So when you wanna work on social media more at home, you have all the information in one place. Now, what's the best content to put on Facebook? Well, remember, content is your fire. And it needs to be really good. And as I told you, I'll spend hours sometimes with Steve perfecting a campaign, perfecting a sentence, changing what they say. Right. Even Mark, when we walked in his room yesterday and we were working on how we were going to say one thing that he mentioned yesterday, we tweaked it by one or two words to capture. Because it's such a, what he talked about was so powerful that I wanted to make sure everybody got it. So what you say matters. But how you say it matters more. Mm -hmm. 
Does that make sense to you? Are you with us? Right. Okay, good. So you want to share quotes. You want to share videos, right? You want to share content from others in your industry even. You might need to tell people what makes your product more unique and different than anybody else's. You want to fill in the, in the gaps. You want to answer questions. Don't be afraid to answer questions. If you can't answer, somebody que answer somebody's question, you can't sell them the product. It's that simple. It's not that easy. You just can't push a button and say sold. You have to work at it a little bit. You have to work at it a little bit. You have to interview someone and share. Sometimes I love doing interviews, right? Right. I mean, we do this all the time yes. on the blogs. You know, we interview whether it be successful in franchise owners, whether it be industry leaders, whatever the case may be, because we know that that's the content that our that our audience wants to see. Before and after pictures. We already if know that. you are if if you're on TLS and you're not sharing your before and afters on a weekly, daily basis, then you're totally missing the yeah. ball game on this. Or tutorials, right? We already right. know how much we benefit with tutorials using the motives, images that are posted. There's some, I don't know, over 100,000 hashtags for motives almost every other month. Those are pictures you could be reposting for content. Okay, so then these are some right. of the things that we work on. So you can see on the motives page, we simply post a picture of the tutorial. And we've reached right. 5,398 people within 14 minutes of posting it. You didn't even have to do any work. We didn't have to do any work. All we did was take a picture we found on Instagram and post it. That's an easy one. That's something everyone can do. So I'm giving you the easy ones first, right? Then you can put up a quote. We talked about putting quotes up. The perfect day, you know, the perfect day, going to bed with a dream, waking up with a purpose, which is what we all do, right? So you can put this out there. Now, you can run a campaign. And the cool thing about running campaigns on Facebook is you can decide how much you want to spend. So let me show you what I mean. You can decide if you want to, just go back one second, yep. if you want to increase sales on your website, boost your post, promote people to follow your page, increase engagement in your mobile app. Whatever you're trying to do, Facebook lays it out all for you. Now, this particular post was a practice post that Steve and I were doing. Right. But I put it up on January 31st, and all I did was decide to take a little picture of the new uh, liquid lips, uh, lipsticks, and I put kiss and tell. In order to succeed in branding, you have to share your brand. You can't buy happiness, but you can buy these all-day liquid sticks by Motives. Which one of these makes you happy? Well, within a few minutes, now wait a minute, I bought a 20, do we bought a $20? You bought $20, but here's what was even more impressive. Well, first was of all, is that, was is that this was a brand new page you started that day. Yeah, we started this page So this page wasn't that day. like your established page. Thank you page. guys for following, we had a lot of great followers in the first few minutes. But we started that page, this was just literally January 31st, right. that's a test page, but now we're going to use it because everybody started following it. And we had 4,700 people reached within the first hour that we started this page. Right. Okay, this first post, which was in about one hour after starting the page. So we decided let's run a $20 ad right. on this page to see what people like about this particular lipstick. See if that'll get them to buy. So you can see right here, we, our budget spent, we'll go back one second, Steve. Yep. If you go back there, you can see there's $13.46 left on the ad. Do you see that? Now that's because I chose to spend $20 on a Facebook ad. Go ahead. We reached 4,700 people. We paid, we had $6.54 spent already in the budget for the day. We had only spent $6.54, but we had 42 cl photo clicks, six lick links, and three page likes at that time. Look what happened. We had nine preferred customer orders on the same day. Now think about that. Would you pay $6.54 for nine orders? Same day, guys. Same day. Same day, within minutes, on the same 31st that we ran that ad, you can see right there on 131, Steve and I were like, what a great test to show that somebody only spent $6.54 to get nine preferred customers right. and I think six orders there if you count the orders. Right. Six orders. Would you spend six dollars and fifty-four cents to get nine new customers and six orders? Right. Would, would you guys do that? Because if not, you're not really seeing the power of social media. Do you guys get that out there? 
it's really, really important. I want to make sure you understand it, because I'm talking about investing a little bit in order to gain a lot. Right. Investing a little bit in order to gain a lot. And that's what we do. So all you, and by the way, those weren't my pictures of the lips. I just stole them. Yeah. Somebody else created them over here and put them up on motors, and I thought they look good. Everybody wants to try those. They look so luscious. Those lips are so pretty. I want to put that up there and see if we can sell them, and that's what we did, and it works. Twitter. Twitter. Twitter the for power business. of a tweet. You know, it's obviously, again, about brand awareness. It's about lead generation. A lot of these are going to be the same as what you just saw on Facebook. It's just how you're going to communicate and interact with your, with your audience. You know, on Twitter, obviously, you only have 140 characters. Like everybody tells you, you should always write no more than 120 because you want to make sure that people can actually repost and talk to you about your tweet. Everybody wants to run, you know, as much as they can, but then they don't allow for people to actually engage or communicate with their brand or their audience. You know, great place for offering, you know, freebies and giveaways. We'll talk all about this here shortly when we talk about hashtag campaigns. And also, one of the things I love about Twitter is how fast you can respond to people. Right. You can actually give somebody love that you don't know by simply hitting retweet. Mm. And that's something that we do, right, Murray? We do it a lot in the backstage. When somebody writes to us, I always want to retweet somebody who's really inspired or something that they say that I like. Because even though I might not have time to write something back to them, if I retweet them, I'm acknowledging them. I'm making them feel important. Take five minutes out of your day every day and do that. Right. You have to ask yourself a question. Are you on social media looking for ex-boyfriends and ex-girlfriends? <laughs> oh. If you're looking online for a new husband or new wife, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> or a wife or a husband, right? But the point is, you want to make sure that you're interacting with people. The way to build relationships with people is to have conversations. You can't just go on social media and expect everybody to be your friend and not interact with them. That's not how we build relationships offline. So if you see these slides, you'll be able to see at the end of the presentation, these are important uh, slides because we talk to you about each one of the things that are important to talk about on that particular platform. That's right. right. And of course, these are the buzzword, buzzwords for Twitter. Retweet, like tweet. mention, favorites, all of that different stuff. Now, here's some of the things to consider that are important on Twitter, right? Your, your profile. Right. Your profile page is so important. So we focus on what's important for us. What are, what's the message that I'm trying to send? I want to make sure people know that I'm a, a, a mom and a grandmom and a wife and an entrepreneur and I love fashion and I love beauty. And I make sure that's in my profile. Because if you just put in your profile that you love dogs, which is good, by the way, if you do, or cats, that's the only people you're going to connect with. But if you put, I'm a mom, I'm a grandmother, I'm a wife, I'm an entrepreneur, I love fashion, I love beauty, and I love pets. That's right. That works. That works. Does that make sense to you? It's all about sometimes you confuse people about who you are. And I wonder if you know who you are. Of course you know who you are. So don't confuse people with who you are. The first mistake you make is your profile's wrong. You fix your profile to identify who you want to identify. You fix your profile to identify who you're looking to identify. Does that make sense to you? I think I know it makes sense to them down there. That's great. But that's what I'm trying to say. You will attract what you attract. Just like Bishop Jordan said yesterday, your mind attracts what you attract. So if you want to change your thinking, you've got to get rid of the stinking thinking and start thinking. You see what I'm saying? You gotta start thinking, change the way you think, change the way people see you in order for things to change. Otherwise they don't change. So we know that the profile's important. Right. You know, a lot of the different content, you know, we use, you know, Twitter a lot for customer service. You know, to tweet out, you know, different things, to respond to different questions that are being asked about our brands. Well, you need to also be looking at, you know, tweeting out those questions about your own brands that, you, um, that you're in business with. Start conversations. You know, retweet from the best. But here's the thing about it. What you want to do is, as you know, you want to have that bio, like Lauren mentioned, you know, ironclad. But because when you create great content on Twitter, you want somebody to go back to your profile and your bio and say, man, this is somebody I want to follow. 
because now you've got them engaged with you. Now you can continuously engage with them. As well as, of course, we'll talk a lot about hashtags here shortly. And these are just simple examples of how I tweet. Twitter is my business voice. I make sure that whatever I'm talking about, whether it's related to my brand or what I'm doing is incorporated in Twitter because remember, that's my voice. My YouTube is my channel. That's my business show. That's the show, the videos I want you to watch. We, we can pass yeah. these just for, for time's sake because I want to save time, but you know, what's on your business show? Videos. Videos that can go viral, right? And we have videos that have gone viral before. But you can't have videos go viral if you don't start using videos. So now I'm not asking you to jump in everything at once, nor is Steve. We're asking you to make sure that whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. So don't use them all. If you don't plan to use them the right way, just pick a few of them. That's okay too. Right. And the great thing is, is also, like I loved when um, Rick and Elizabeth showed their, you know, their, um, their videos yes. that they did because it was, was just brilliant. on a phone. That's yeah. all they did. It wasn't some fancy equipment. It was just simply pulling out their iPhone and recording that, that, that action happening. That's all it takes. It doesn't require any specific skills or experience. It just requires hitting play on a video and recording what you're about to do. Yeah, and one of the things that's funny, I was with Elizabeth when she just posted that video in Puerto Rico, and we, she literally, within five minutes, had 5,000 likes. It was the most liked video you said or picture you had on your Facebook ever. Why? Because people get engaged with videos. They like to interact. They like to see what you're doing. But if you just write up text like, oh, today is the worst day ever, who are you connecting with? Who are, the only person who's going to email you is a shrink. <laughs> the only person who wants to be your friend then is somebody who's in the loony house. You got to think about you are what you think about and you attract what you attract, what you think. And if you don't change your thinking, you will continue to attract the people who you're thinking about. And if that's negative, it's toxic for your health. Mm. It is toxic for your health. You have to eliminate that thinking because nothing, nothing will ever change unless you eliminate the toxins. I always say people have to take a mental, thank you, I like that little chant. So people have to take, love you guys, love you. Uh, people have to take, that's good. We can keep doing it all day, that's okay, we'll short. People have to take, you know, JR talks about taking a mental enema, right? People have to clean their stinking thinking and we have to eliminate the toxins from our brain. Otherwise, it becomes toxic waste. Otherwise, it becomes toxic waste and there's no way to fix things. So we have to do what's right and we have to change the way we see ourselves because as I said in my earlier welcome the other day, you had a purpose before anyone had an opinion of you. You had a purpose before anyone had an opinion. So what you and how you see yourself, don't you let anyone affect how you see yourself. Right. Don't you let anybody do it. That's a big thing for you. Because you can ask Steve, even backstage I was like, you know, Steve, or I'm not quite ready. I hope you got this because I'm, I'm having tremendous anxiety and I didn't sleep well. And he's like, why are you second guessing yourself? And I was like, you're right, let's go kill this. Yeah. You know what this I mean? This is what we do. Because if you don't get that out of your head, you will destroy yourself for the rest of your life. And it's a spinning, it's a disaster. There's no way out of it. Once the cycle goes on, you kill yourself. That's right. That's what happens. That's so right. let's stop that from this moment on forever. Agree? We will, the most important person is you. The most important person is you. That's how we feel about you, and that's how we want you to feel about you. Okay, Steve. All right, so let's it. talk about the 10 3 1 rule. You know, everything that we post has to have a purpose. And so we want to share 10 things that entertain us, inspirational posts, quotes, whatever they are, re um, related to what we love and what, we are, what we're interested in share three industry-specific pieces of information. At that time, then you can sell a product off or sell something that you want to do. You want to create yourself as an expert on social media. 
somebody that people go to for information and look up to, and then you earn the right to be able to sell them something or engage with them in a product offer. Let's talk about how you sell, um, search and reach new customers. People dislike <laughs> being told what to buy. I mean, let's be real here. Most people don't like going into a retail establishment for apparel because somebody's gonna tell them what they think looks good on them rather than what just feels good on you. That's right. They simply want to be engaged in a relationship experience that helps them solve their problem. That's right. I need a dress shirt. I want a white dress shirt. Help me lead to where the white dress shirts are. Don't tell me that there's a pink one right here because that's not what I'm looking for. But Solve I, those problems. But I like your purple one. Thank you, I appreciate Very nice. that. Traditional marketing. This is what we've all grown up with and all used to. Interrupting customers to get their attention. Aggressive advertising tactics. Making sure that we're either hurting our competition by our, by our advertising or simply going after different individuals. Most per, um, must persuade um, customers of their needs and very strong sales pitch. Their, their objective is, is to get you to be so hyped up that they're going to put a piece of paper underneath you and say, sign in. That's not what sells anymore. Now it's all about attraction marketing. It's all about finding a consumer that is looking for, that has a problem and seeking their solution. It's about giving them the products and the, benefit, the benefits of the products and the services that you are offering so that they can make educated decisions on whether that product is right for them. Right. It's about customers knowing that they have a need and customers asking to buy. You provided them what your product does, and it is them who is coming to you asking to purchase that product. It's all about education rather than sales tactics. And of course, you have to know what you're offering, right? You have to understand what your product does, and you need to figure out where you can reach those people. So if you know that you have women who want to try makeup because they're not very good at applying makeup, and a lot of times women don't feel confident applying makeup, they don't know where to put it on, they don't know how to use it, so they just stick with the basics like mascara or lip gloss. You have to figure out where are you gonna find those people? How do I find those people? Don't just try to target everyone. It doesn't always work. So what I talk about is going in and identifying where you can find those people and then talk to them. And then every time you talk to them is I always make sure that I'm complimenting somebody, just like in person. Anytime I meet somebody, I always try to say, wow, you're so beautiful, I'm so excited for you, I'm proud of you, I have heard so much about you, you've done so well and you've come out of nowhere, we just had this conversation down there. I'm always thinking about what I can say nice to somebody so they can remember me. And they're gonna remember me by thinking to themselves, wow, she's a really nice person. What will they say about you? Are you doing the same thing? What will people say about you? How will they remember you? And that's what I'm always thinking about every time I respond to somebody, because I want them to feel loved, or I want them to feel liked, or I want them to feel that they connect with me, or I want them to feel I understand them, or I know how they feel. And that's what social media is all about. Now, of course, let's talk about how you can sell something really fast. And I want to do it in two simple statements. You, when you sell something, right, you have to understand, I said, what makes your product different and unique than somebody else's. You are not there to destroy somebody else's brand or somebody else's company. That makes you look bad. Don't get into that war. Trust me, even growing on Instagram, the girls will tell you, we've dealt with that with other companies, right? And I see Denise smiling big, because we struggle with it a little bit. There was this one company that wanted to just hurt motives. And we were all just like bigger and above it. Nobody responded to it. And we got bigger and better than them. And we sell more than them even before we started Instagram. But we sell double more now by not responding negatively. Don't feed into the nonsense. Don't feed into the nonsense. The only time I might get a little cutthroat on there is if somebody talks about my children. <laughs> then there's, there's, no, there's no rules, right, Steve? That's I always right. tell Steve, there's no rules when you're talking about my children. 
Okay, you can talk about me, but don't talk about my kids. So my point is, is that's the only time there's no rules. Every other time we have manners. Every other time we have manners. Otherwise, you can take the boxing gloves out, that's right? right? The difference that will sell your product is one thing. What's the benefit? If you talk about what the features are, nobody cares. What's the difference between a feature and a benefit? It's real simple. A feature is, for instance, Steve, right? If you take vitamins, you know they're good for you. That's right. But a benefit of isotonics would be what? Um, the, the absorption, how it goes through your body. I'm getting more out of my vitamins. That's exactly right. So imagine no longer having to swallow the big pill. Right. Imagine being able to drink your vitamins every day. Don't talk about how vitamins are good for you. People who take vitamins know that. <laughs> they know that. What is your benefit? What's your edge? Do we not talk about this all the time? We're always talking about what makes us better. Why are we different and unique? Nobody cares that makeup look, makes you look pretty. That's why people wear it, folks. What makes us better? What's the benefit is that you no longer have to worry about trying to figure out what looks great on you. You don't have to go to a department store to have somebody help you apply makeup. We'll come to you in your home. We'll teach you all the right colors to wear. You don't have to have a drawer full of makeup that you're not going to use anymore. That's the benefit of motives. Does that make sense to you? Those two things and switching how you're saying it will change how you sell product. No longer talk about the features. Start talking about the benefits. Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense to you? And I had an example up here, and we don't need to go back to it, but I'll tell it to you real quick. I was reading about this story about how a garage uh, door company was selling a no-name, was selling more garage door openers than anybody else on Twitter. It's a no-name. And I thought, I read the story, I was intrigued, because I was like, what are they doing right? Well, they weren't just another company saying, hey, this garage door opens up faster than your garage door. <laughs> what they did was say, no more worrying about the harsh weather. That's right. You don't have to worry about getting wet when you get home. They literally visual, I visualized in my mind why I needed a garage door opener, and I forgot I already have one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? It's the visualization of that benefit to that person will cause them to buy it. That's right. That's what it comes down to. It's all about what it means to you. You know, what is the benefit and what it means to that individual for that. Translating those features into benefits helps potential buyers actually feel like that they're getting value out of what you're offering them. It's also about making sure that when you're selling the products, that you're not focused in on what the competition's doing, but that you're more focused in on how great your products and, what, and, and the benefits of your That's products. It. That's, That's it. what do it's about. Do you guys get that? And do you know why OPC3 is so special? Do you know why? Think about that. And if you don't, I'm, okay, well, we're gonna have to have another session on this. We'll yeah. do some product training later. Andrew, that's one of the things you can fill them in on later. What makes OPC3 so special? And share a, a testimonial. Talk about the benefits of what they can expect to see. Don't tell them it's just another antioxidant. They don't care. That's right. Tell them what they can expect it'll do for them, how it'll fill that void in their life. And then prove it. Right, testimonials are a powerful thing. Those two pe testimonials that Marty did on DNA, you could have shut that presentation down after those two, video uh, those two pictures. That's right. Period. I didn't even need to see any more. Why, I already know, because I use the ointment for razor burn. Because I have a, t a tendency to get razor burn, so I use that myself. But I thought to myself, if he just put those two pictures up there, Steve and I were like, literally almost, you, you see that little baby? That's remarkable. What about getting permission to use that from somebody and sharing it? And if you put their name and where they're located on it, it makes it come alive. And then the next thing, of course, is take them where they want to go, right? That's right. Send them to your website. Have a place for them to go. Sorry. That's okay. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> you know, always, you know, explain, you know, something about what's going on, what, what they're going to gain by doing something right now. Give them a reason to act right now. Whether that is a special offer, whether that's a special discount, a special rate, whatever the case may be, always randomly give your audience a reason to act right now. That's so important. So for instance, when we have uh, special offers that go out, where I'm promoting something that a partner store has as a discount, I'm always putting a timeline on it. You got not just December 12th, you got four hours left. And why do I say four hours? I don't put the date. I'm putting four hours because I need them to know, look at their watch for that moment and say, mm, where am I gonna be between now and four hours? I know I have to run to the doctors. I know I have to make it back in time for a meeting for JR. Am I gonna have time to buy it before I come back, when I come back in order to take advantage of the special? Because if not, what am I gonna do right then and there? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna buy it. So stop putting dates by it. If you know it expires today or tomorrow, put hours. That's right. It has a greater effect on things. That's right. And I mean, it's all about what platforms produce the best social commerce. You know, when you look at like, for instance, like an Instagram, average order on Instagram is $65. I can't even put a web link on Instagram and it's $65. Why is that so important? Because sales. if you are simply showing a great picture of your product or a great use of your product, then this is where your bio comes critical. Because if Yardley shows a great product image of OPC3 in his life, and they want to go purchase that product, the first thing they're going to do is go to his bio. And if there's no link to go buy that product, he just lost a customer. That's why it's so important on Instagram to make sure that your URL is in your bio. Pinterest, another great place, $58, and it goes on and on and on. And by but the you, way, Mark will tell you, Instagram is our number one ordering social media site no from any outside order for this company. Very unheard of, like Steve said, because if there's no, they don't allow you to put a web link. You can't link right to it. You can type it, but you can't link right to it. It's still our number one, why? because it's a visual. Right. People want to see what the visual looks like. What's the end result? How could that benefit me? If she has brown eyes, it might look the same on me. If she has blue eyes, it may look the same on me. Mm -hmm. And people visualize it. But you know what, Lauren? When you created the Modus Mavens, yeah. you know, one of the things that blew my mind was, was is that when I, know, when I found out who the Mavens were, of course, the first thing was, well, who are they? They've got to be some big celebrities. You know, if they're getting several hundred thousand followers on Instagram, they got to be big time. Big time. And what we, I, we work really hard for several hundred thousand. Right, exactly. But what we realized was, was is that they were just great at what they did. Yeah, really. You know, it wasn't that they were just necessarily celebrities. They were just great at what they did, and people picked up on it. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to bring up a couple Moda's Mavens up on the stage so that they could actually share with you how they interact and engage with their audience. Uh, you want to ask them a question? You want them to just talk? How do you want to do this? Well, we'll just let them talk. But I know that also, Miriam, you also posted something Thursday on, on, on social media, on Instagram. And we also want to see kind of the success from that as well. See that the post was already pre-written. I've already chosen the preview picture that I wanted to use for the video. And you know, keep in mind you want it to be engaging, you want it to speak to your audience, you want it to kind of tell what the whole video is going to be about. I used a few hashtags. Most importantly, I asked the question. I wanted my audience to respond back to me. I wanted them to engage with me. So I said, which one is your favorite? Which lipstick calls out to you? And so, as you can see in the post, there are a lot of comments, people are talking about what lipstick they prefer, and you know, they're tagging their friends, telling their friends what they should wear. So this is sort of how we like to engage and how we like to interact with our audience. But, and you can see also at the bottom of that one where she, where she said, thanks for replying back to my comment. You can see where Maryam answered what she was asking. 
And the whole point of that was, is I guarantee you, she got a new customer by that. Because all the girl wanted was the details. She was already sold. She was already sold. She knew what she wanted. She knew what color she wanted. She just wanted to get her question answered, and she answered it right away. Exactly. And as a matter of fact, I was on stage when this was answered. So who did it for me? It was I my did. partner, Lee. Yeah, I did. That's right. Hey, Lee. Engagement is so important. And, and even if you, know, if, you, if, you're, if you have someone who's working with you, or you know, if your girlfriend, your husband, or even your friend, get them to answer back for you. Sometimes you know, she's in the bathroom, and she's doing her makeup. You know, I'm screaming out the comments to her. I'm saying, hey, babe, how do you want me to reply back? What should I write? And it's so important to stay engaged and post often. And uh, I think it's so, right, I mean, it's so important to make sure, I can't stress enough how important engagement is, wouldn't you say? It is, absolutely. And we also want to stress that you don't have to be a makeup artist or you no. don't have to be I am not a makeup know, someone artist. with a degree <laughs> to do this. I, I, I do a horrible cat eye. I tried. I did the two dots. I tried to connect it. <laughs> I'm true. not very good at it. But you have to learn the language. And it's easy. Just learn, you know, cat eye, smoky eye. And it's great. And it really brought us together. It made us a lot closer. As, absolutely, you know, yeah. yeah. Teamwork is what makes yeah. the dream work. One of the things I love about Lee and Miriam is they're the perfect example of what we talked about in the beginning, teaming up with your partner. So they are partners in life and in love, and the most amazing thing about it is that they know how to cover each other when one can't do the work. So when she posted that video, don't you think that Lee was backstage making sure he was answering comments? Of course. He's smart enough to know that she's got to engage with people all the time. And that's what I talk about, partnering up with somebody who's got your back. So if you have a partner in the business, and we are all partners, that's why anytime I see somebody's post and promoting something, I always try to leave a comment. I always try to hit a click a like. Because why we should support each other in that fashion. It really makes a difference and it'll help you grow, guys. It'll help you grow. So instead of, instead of being a little jelly sometimes, sometimes we can get a little jelly. We see somebody's success in our team and we're like, and I'm always like, get rid of the jelly. There's no reason to be jealous. No jelly in this room is allowed. We're here to support each other, empower each other, embrace each other, right. love each other, build each other up. That's yep. what we do. Click like, click like. And if there was a love button, I would click love. Okay? That's what I would do because that's what works. That's what works. Any final thoughts on that, babe? Yeah, I, we just can't stress it enough. You have to make sure that you're working with a team. Lauren was saying earlier that, you know, if you don't have a husband to do this for you, if you don't have a boyfriend, then, you know, get your friends involved. Get your kids yes. involved. Get everybody involved. You know, because if you believe in something, if you truly are living it, then everybody will believe it. Your audience will believe it. That's the only way to do it. And when in doubt, just go to Motives Cosmetics on Instagram. I mean, they figured it out. They post often. They comment back. They've left the clues there for you, so you don't have to do the work. So if you're not sure, just go to Motives Cosmetics and see and follow them and see how they actually go about posting and responding back. And it's, they've laid it out all for you, so it's really a great place to start. That, that, that's great advice, isn't it? When you think about it, it's simple, but it's great advice. I mean, that's how we grow, guys. That's how you'll build followers, by engaging with people. Tenny, you're brilliant at that. Share with us some of your top tips. You know, uh, I think one thing that uh, we should really focus on is just the aesthetic quality of social media. Social media is no longer just a tool that we use. It's like an industry in itself, really. Exactly. People are really utilizing it to grow their business. And it can be anybody. It can be from a makeup artist to someone who's just purely business. Um, but we can't forget the aesthetic quality. That's so important, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest especially. But Instagram, I mean, is so hot right now, and it's so photo-focused mm -hmm. that you should really focus on thoughtful photos and text. But because it is mostly photos, that's really the focus, you know? Um, but again, if you're not a makeup artist, you don't have to worry about that because we're kind of doing the work for you and a lot of other people are using <laughs> Motives Cosmetics on Instagram. Just tag us, just credit us, and you can use any photo you want. It's really that simple. Ooh. You're not a makeup artist if, um, you know, if you're a man and you don't really, you're not really into makeup. Uh, it's, it's really simple. You can use any of our stuff. Um, but I also noticed that product shots do really well, too. Not necessarily 
just makeup, you know, so if there's a new product launch, make, you know, we use, we, a lot of us use digital cameras and not just, you know, you don't want to put, put up a, a poor quality photo. Make sure the lighting is nice. Make sure it's a crisp photo. That's what really gets attention. So if you're putting up thoughtful photos and thoughtful text, there's no reason why you wouldn't be successful on social media. Yeah, and I think that's a good point. I think sharing new products, even before anybody has seen them, is one of the cool things. Like, the fact that Miriam showed that product when we were up here getting ready to talk about Modus, minutes after they just saw the release of it, it was still new to the market. So her, her, her fans, the people engaged with her, felt like she was giving them a treat. Yeah. And people like that, and I, I think that the whole engagement process is everything, don't you? You know, people want to be heard. Yeah. You know, people just want to be heard, and that's a very simple idea to grasp. Ask a question, which one do you like best? It's, it's, it seems really simple, but that's just, it makes people's day for you to ask them their opinion. Yeah, and I think that's such an important point, because think about it, sometimes we often go by so fast in life that we don't take time to ask anybody else questions, and we're just in a rush thinking about ourselves, and I think so many times we forget that people don't care about how much you know, they care about how much you care. They care about how much you care. Exactly. So that's why we're always making an effort to constant, Steve has a team of like, I don't know, 12 people. They're con the whole thing is always focused on exactly what she just said, being thoughtful. Mm. Being thoughtful is still the basic principle of the 10 golden rules that we were taught when we were kids. Yeah. I mean, you know, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. And so I think being kind to people makes such a big difference. And you guys are brilliant at it. I mean, I wanted you to hear from them because you don't have to be a makeup artist. Lee, certainly not. I wouldn't ask him to do my makeup. <laughs> and he's, he's great at what he does. He knows how to engage with people. The girls don't just do makeup. They know how to engage. They know that an online conversation is as important as an offline conversation. Absolutely. And that's what matters, right? Love you guys. Thank you. Aren't they Thank amazing? Thank you. Love you. Guys. They are amazing. I love you guys. That, meant, that was great. Thank you guys. That was great. Love you. Great job. Thank you. They love. That's great. So, a good point, Steve. All right, so now let's get into some recruiting. How do we recruit new on franchise owners using social media? Well, we're going to talk about what we're not going to do first, right? right? Which is we're not going to recruit people online who are looking for a fast, easy button, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want to uh, sign up and recruit people who aren't willing to commit for six months because that's a waste of your time. You don't want inconsistent people. You're not looking for people who want to get rich fast because they're not going to stick around. You don't want to get uh, people in who are addicted to immediate results. Sometimes things take time and you don't want to recruit people who are afraid to be on the phone because they're not going to do you any good. But right. you know what though, also, in our content, we don't want to also talk about any of this as well. Because if, this, if we start talking about this stuff in our content, it's going to attract those people. That's right. So we also got to watch out for the content that we post out there as well. You know, so when are you ready to actually recruit? Well, if, that's if, if you feel like when you're giving your prospects so much value that they actually feel guilty for not taking the information or not asking about it, when you create an online presence that fans will, th will see as phenomenal for them to possibly start a new business. Think about the fact that you're giving them so much value, they can't say no. They can't say no. Focus online recruiting only during hours of the day. You can't physically be picking up the phone and calling someone. Only do it in the hours that you can't physically. So what does that mean for me? It's so funny because Sue Guido was playing me a trivia crack the other night at like 2.30 in the morning. Because I don't go on social media without my team. My team is a great, have a great team, Beyond and all this team down here. And they're great at helping me post during the day. And we have a content calendar. Steve will tell you, everybody has a plan about what the method to the madness is. Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday my team comes, they have their content ready, but they're not just worried about the content that they're doing, they're also worried about everybody else's content. Because Modus Cosmetics is looking how they can help promote Isotonics. Isotonics is looking how they can help promote another product line, etc. So they're all trying to figure out how can we engage with all of our brands. That's right. But what I was saying was, is I only go online to answer questions late at night because I want to engage. 
I want to make sure that every minute of my time during the day is being used for being on the phone, getting all the things done that are hard to get done that nobody ever wants to do. I do those first. The difference between me and a lot of people is I do the hardest things first because I believe getting those things out of the way so I can enjoy the rest of my day any way I want to. Any way I want to. Because I've already done the things that most people procrastinate about. My husband's always like, you're always screaming or upset by 10.30 in the morning. I'm like, that's the hardest thing first. <laughs> the hardest things are always done first in my house. So the rest of the day, when I want to leave at lunch at 12 o'clock, Natalia, do we not go with the baby? If we have what we call in our house, Andrew will tell you, called an eight-in lunch. If the baby wants to go to lunch, we all stop what we're doing at 12. Why? Because we've done the hardest things first. And you should be able to live your life the same way. And if you're not, you're not in control of your life, your time, or anything that you're doing. If you're really serious about being in control, those are the things that you'll do. But at any rate, you only want to talk to recruit people online when you're tired of talking to your own friends and family. Think about that. When you have people, sometimes you don't even want to talk to them anymore. You want to talk to those people that you haven't met before, but you've established a relationship with online. That's right. You know, obviously, ads are a great way. We showed you, you know, a quick little thing with what Lauren did with the motives, you know, to get people online through Facebook advertising. There's a lot of other different ways through LinkedIn and other different sources, as well as making sure that you create a blog. Create a blog designed about what, what your industry is going to be and become that expert. Because the great thing about blogs is, is, is that when you write content for that blog, then you now post it on your Twitter account. You now post it on your Facebook account. You now engage your audience, and now you have a place to send them off to, to where you fully control. You don't control what they see all around Facebook. You don't, con see, you don't control what they see on Twitter. All you can control is where you send them to and what they're seeing from that standpoint. Great place, you know, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is an excellent place to find out every single little detail about every single person. <laughs> it really is. But you know what? People are always looking for, whether it be new opportunities, new services, new products, whatever the case may be. Great place to demonstrate what your expertise is, whether that is working at home, finding people who just want time freedom, using those key words that may have gotten you to look at the business, to use those same key words to share so that other people might be attracted to those different words. Very good. Post ads in the job board, but make sure that if you do post ads on LinkedIn, Make sure that you identify that you are looking for entrepreneurs. Yeah. You're looking for business owners. You're not looking to bring on staff to simply run your business. Make sure that you're very clear with them because otherwise they you're going to have to up. filter out a lot of garbage in well, the Well, they process. think that you're looking for somebody to hire for a job and you want to be yeah. clear that you're not looking to hire anybody for a job, right? That's right. You know, connect with people on other social medias. Make sure that every single social media presence that you have, that it looks just as if you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever. Because if I go on and I see Tom's face, and Tom's, Tom's profile picture on Facebook matches his LinkedIn, I'm going to more than likely connect with him on LinkedIn. If I see him on Twitter with the same profile, because we've already generated a relationship or trust on Facebook, so I'm now going to plug into his other platforms, which he's sharing different information on because each platform's a little different. That's right. That's, that's, that's so important, Steve. And of course, you want to search for people who have the same interests as you. We talked about this earlier. If you like makeup, look for the people you're targeting in the same areas of people who are looking in the places that you're looking at. So if you're online and you'd like a forum that's all about makeup lovers, I guarantee you, if you're talking about motives, you're targeting the right people. That's right. You're targeting the right people. Same thing with weight loss, right? If you're looking for, for people who are fitness you know, gurus or people who love the whole uh, you know, running and they go to the gym and they love taking their vitamins and they're talking about all these things, that's where you're going to search for them. And you're going to go with them groups and you're going to interact with them. And like Steve said before, you're going to make yourself an expert. That's right. You're going to establish yourself first and be liked. Say thoughtful things, not go in there and tell everybody that product doesn't work, mine does. That's not what we do. That's right. 
and then of course taking them to the blog so that they can have the information to go to. Now we get to talk about one of our favorite things, which are hashtags. Yeah, I'm going to let you run through this one fast, and then I'll talk more about the next one. Absolutely. So the thing is, first, hashtags increase social branding. They allow people to see, in, see um, very quickly what your campaign is about. You know, we use a lot of different hashtags with Market America. I just want to focus in, you know, it just allows us to group, you know, products, allows us to track the branding, et cetera. But I want to get to a few of the things. It's been a part of everything. Let me get to some of the hashtags that we're actually now using. Um, defining your goals. Get through some of this stuff real quick. So here's perfect examples. When you go on to Twitter, when you go on to Instagram, look for popular hashtags that are related to your industry. Mm. And what I normally do is, I normally go to third-party sources. There's a lot of different places, Tagify and different things of that sort, to where you can actually put in hashtags. And they will actually say, well, your hashtag is popular, but these are more popular and related to you and they're going to allow you to be able to hit a much bigger and reach a much bigger audience. It allows us to really do a lot when it comes to, you know, giveaways, campaigns, um, from that standpoint. Um, but, you know, the thing is, is that it allows us to do so much with the limited space on social media that we have. You know, but when you use a hashtag, you really can't expect instantaneous results. You have to, nurture the campaign along. You have to re-emphasize, repeat it. You can't use this as a way to be pushy or to control the conversation. You use this to group that conversation together. One of the most famous and actually the most popular hashtag campaign was obviously with ALS. And what ALS did was is that they came up with the concept of the ice bucket challenge. And you either How took many the challenge. Of them took the challenge. What's that? How many of you guys took the yeah. challenge? So 2.4 million videos were submitted, and 115 million dollars was raised to the awareness, you know, to help fight this disease. Is that Jim getting? Worked? That is Jim getting dunked. <laughs> I love it. That's so, great. But you know what, it was also, it's also a way for us to be able to show some of our campaigns. And you know, we're gonna talk a little bit about a brand new campaign that, we're re that we just launched on Tuesday. It's called the hashtag shop cart and hashtag shop my list campaign. And here's how it works. This is me, I ran out of OPC3 shoes. I posted to my underscore shop.com and I said, just ran out of this, need some ASAP. And that is a product, that is the OPC3 product page um, for the choose on my shop.com page. Hashtag shop cart. What happened was Lauren then saw that and said, me too, and replied to that. Now, what we're doing in the background is, is that we are taking my tweet and Lauren's tweet. Next time you go to shop.com, we're adding it to your cart. So now, all of a sudden, that, D that product, that OPC3 Chew, has automatically been added to my cart so that the next time I log into shop.com, I go see that there's one item, and then I can go buy my chews. So, Steve, just making yeah. sure that everybody understands. So, when you use the hashtag shop cart yes. in the tweet, that automatically put that product in your one cart. That's uh, right. Isn't that amazing? That's as, amazing. As Think well about as that. So, using hashtag shop cart, you can also get your customers using that. So, for instance, you're on the road, you're traveling. You're not available for to take an order for them. You can say anything you want. Do you happen to see that we haven't discussed? You can literally share it on social media, and you can use the hashtag shop cart, right? Mm -hmm. And it'll automatically go into your shopping That's cart. That's right. As well as everybody who replies to that is also going to get it added to their cart as well. Exactly. So here's the process. 
we now have in the back end of shop.com a little authentication area. So you're gonna go into your My Account section and you're gonna actually allow us to authorize your Twitter account to be seen by our servers. Mm. And what we're gonna be doing is, is that we're gonna be looking for either hashtag shop cart or hashtag my, um, shop my list. When we see that, we know that that's something that you want to purchase, whether it be in your cart or whether it be say something for later in your my list. We are actually going to put those in the specific areas so that when you and your customers go back to shop.com, it's already accessible. Again, there's going to be a lot of videos, landing pages, education on this. But this is our way of basically saying that we know you share products and we know people are responding to that. Why not make it easy on them and just simply put it in their cart so that the next time they go to shop.com, it's already there. They, they don't have to remember it and they that's go shop. Brilliant. That's brilliant. That's brilliant, Steve. This is another now, thing. You, that, hey, do you guys get that out there? All you have to do is if you're in a hurry and you don't remember to do something or your customer doesn't remember to do something, I know my daughter is the queen of it. She'll be buying something on shop.com and she'll forget to check out. And every time I open up my computer when she's been upstairs, there's 40 different opening uh, partner stores up there and she expects me to check out of all of them for her. All I do is I check out the page and I do not buy anything. The point is, the point is if you put the hashtag shop cart, it'll automatically go to your cart, so later on when you go home, it'll remind you that that's a product that's right. that you want. That's powerful, and Steve, that was a surprise, because I didn't even know he was doing this, so that's fantastic. This is right. great, great stuff. So now, another project that we're launching is, is that for 250,000 of your customers' orders, as well as your orders, we are going to be putting in this little cart and it's gonna just say shop.com, hashtag shop on shop. And all we're asking people to do is when they open up that box, take a quick picture of it and use our hashtag. And that way, everybody starts seeing shop on shop. Man, I wanted that outfit. I wanted those tools. I wanted that sporting good. And all of a sudden, shopping on shop, becomes the thing to do on social media. It starts trending, and the next thing you know, all of that is leading back to you as well. Now, what about the shopping annuity? Amazing, yeah. hashtag shopping annuity. Anytime we're talking about this, we should be utilizing the hashtag shopping annuity so that it goes up on the shop shopping annuity webpage so that you can see all the aggregated contents that are happening all around the um, pl different platforms. Now, this is something that many of, some of you know. I know, Chris, you're great at it, you know, using this hashtag. But all you have to do is plug in hashtag MA events into Twitter, and you see pictures from local seminars happening that weekend, pictures from, um, from regional conventions, you know, even, lo even you know, local one-on-one -on -one meetings. Great place for when you're having your next meeting, share some pictures, put the hashtag MA events, and we're promoting this so that people are gonna be able to see what's happening in Wisconsin, what's happening in California, what's happening in Washington State, et cetera. That's powerful. That's powerful. Now let's talk about a new project you know, that, you know, that Lauren, you wanted to really Well, I wanted to do a project where we could get people engaged everywhere, similar to what we did with Moda's and the success I've had with Moda's with using Instagram and having over almost 1.5 million followers in less than a year, right? So what we want to do is we want to do the same thing with shop.com. So what I want to do is I want to get everybody in the social media community, that's not just you, but that's people you know and everybody we don't know, to figure out how they're going to treat yourself. Right. Right? How, you, how, how will you treat yourself? That's the hashtag, okay? And I want people to visualize something big. What is it that they want that they haven't bought for themselves? What would they like to buy that they can get on shop.com? Is it a 75-inch Samsung new big screen, gorgeous crystal clear TV? Is it a new refrigerator, new washer and dryer, new pair of Louboutins? Two pairs of Louboutins? <laughs> Whatever it is, right? I want them to visualize it and I want them to simply either register as a customer on shop.com, 
to, to join the contest, right? All they have to do is register. Now, what does it take to register? We already know it's an email address, and it takes them less than about right. two seconds. And that gives them the ability to get cash back. But we don't put all those details on this hashtag promotion. Why? Because that's too much information. We just ask people to post an image of a product that they've seen on shop.com, use the hashtag, treat yourself, and put it on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or anywhere, and we'll be following them every day. And every day we're gonna be featuring new wants, the things that people want, how they wanna treat themselves. That's right. Right? And one of the things is, is that people might say, well, how'd you come up with hashtag treat yourself? You know, where did that come from? Well, actually, we were looking at the hashtag treat yourself originally. What we found was, was is that hashtag treat yourself was doing about 450,000 hashtag comments every week on Instagram. So now this is already an already engaged audience that is already used to using that hashtag. Guess what's gonna happen? When you start using it and your customers start using it, they're gonna start seeing this hashtag used and they're gonna start using it. People are gonna say, treat yourself. Well, I can actually win $1,000 to actually treat, my, treat myself on it? Man, I'm gonna use this too and engage with the shop.com audience as well, which is obviously gonna lead to that many more customers right. for you. And the bottom line of the contest is, when you get your customers to become new preferred customers or current ones, we're gonna pick a $1,000 gift card winner Right. of the person that we decide is going to earn, who earned the, had the coolest picture on how to treat themselves, right? And you, if you're the preferred customer manager, we're going to give you a $250 gift card right. just for getting them there. That's right. But that means you have to tell people about it. I'm not giving you the card because you don't have to do any work. I want you to do some work. I want you to get people to engage in it and do it. Now, well, you know what? Motives obviously hit a major milestone. Yeah, we've been. We went over things. one million Instagram followers about what three, four months ago. Yes, yes, that was a major milestone, major milestone. guys. We are bigger than Lancome, L'Oreal, Bobby Brown combined on on social media. Right. Our sales doubled. Just in powders, just in powders, just in powders and lipsticks, we're selling over forty million dollars retail a year. We don't even have a store. Oh no. Imagine selling a lipstick without people being able to go into a store and try it on before they buy it. We do. We do, don't we? We do that. We have the power of motives online and we've done it through Instagram. And then of course, there are people who love to work from home in their pajamas and never leave the house and make money too. Do we have any virtual party junkies out there? <laughs> Are there anybody using the new virtual party tools yet? We just launched it, I know it's new, but it's been hugely successful. In just a few months of us launching the virtual tool that our uh, Michael Brady and Gene Wallace, our whole team down there, Chris Petticourt, created for us, okay, in a very short time, we've generated over $600,000 in sales. And tens Just, of thousands of customers. And tens of thousands of customers by people simply logging into Facebook and talking about the product and holding a conversation, what we call a makeup party, right? A modus party for a few hours a day. That's it. That's all people had to do. They never had to leave their house. They never had to put their clothes on. They didn't have to do their hair. They didn't have to get prepared. They didn't have to do anything. You're on Facebook anyway. You guys know that you spend more time on Facebook than you do sometimes talking to your family. We're all guilty of it. Now we should be doing less of that. I'm not promoting that, but we're all guilty of it. What I'm saying is you're already doing it. You're already doing all these things anyway. So all we did was bridge the world of social media and traditional home parties and put it in one place. That's right. That's what we did. And then, of course, no, that's okay. You can keep going because our, 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 you're on Facebook, and we, we talked about this. You make extra money with a little bit of work. You schedule it when it works for you. You can do it spontaneously, and it's fun and easy. Right? And here's the benefits of hosting a party. You receive free gifts and money towards your order. You get tips and tricks from some of the best people. Guess what, guys? You don't have to be a makeup artist. We've already told you. So you don't have to worry about doing that because all you have to do is take Denise's and Aurora's and Ellery's pictures and put them up there during your virtual party post and the product sells itself. 
And then, of course, there's no need to get dressed, no need to clean the house. You're on Facebook anyway, and you get to shop without leaving your home. How powerful is that? That's amazing. Think about that. You get to catch up with old friends. You don't have to do your hair. No one will cancel on you because of the weather. Yes. <laughs> it's fun, guys. It's fun. And we've had huge, huge success with them. We added some enhancements to it. Right, Steve? That's right. I mean, now on the party page, we used to not be able to allow people to edit the party description when the party went live. Now you can edit the party description when it's live or not live, right? OK, now you can keep going. Keep it going. Now you can select 12 looks from the virtual tool instead of three. Now you can also choose videos, right? You can choose videos, and you can talk about videos online. And not only can you put the video up online, but you can hit the magnifying glass, right, Steve? That's right. And what and will it show pops you? up all the different colors that are in that look. And so I that love that. Dump it. And why do I like that? Even though that's there, I would want you to talk about them. If you really want to make that party successful, talk about those products. And if there's dual uses for them, how you use them, how they can be used day or night, all of the things that will get people interested in buying it. Coupon code, now you can actually now use your party discount codes to actually you know, show up and they actually see it down at the bottom. So if you're offering a 10% discount, they're going to see it at the bottom so that they know that they actually got that discount. But you know what? It's all about the success of party users. Yes. And we've got a person who's done an amazing job on selling products using the Moda's virtual party tool. So we're actually going to bring her up on stage, Emily Mayhem. If, we only have a couple minutes up here, but if you really want to learn all her tips and tricks, go to Meet On. She has a great session on there yes. that you can catch where she shares all of her tips and tricks for getting big orders. Yes. Why don't you share a little bit of information with them? Uh, I absolutely love the virtual tool because, like you said, it allows me to stay home and work from home. So I absolutely love it. It's been very successful. It's changed my business dramatically. And um, I actually do them twice a month. I've knocked it down to every three weeks now. So my customers are actually uh, anticipating the parties. That's great. And mm -hmm. how, what's your average sale now per party? Per party, I would say my my average sale per customer would be between ninety to one hundred and twenty dollars. And that's wow. just online. Just online. And how long do you run your parties for? Do you do the three days or the ten days? Um, when I started in the beginning, I ran them for three days and I tried the five days, but um, I noticed that I've got more um, interaction when I did the. 10 day um, because I do like one day skincare. I take them through the whole product line. So one day skincare, one day uh, custom blends and uh, color, whatever. color. Yeah. And then Change I go into lippy day and uh, all about eyes day. So it's and fun. I think, I think one of the key things that you do that's super successful is, is that you communicate with people when you're going to be online. Obviously, you're not online all the time, because if you're online all the time, we got to talk later. But my point is this. You're not online all the time, so you got to communicate when you're going to be online. you got to tell them, well, between 12 and 2, we're going to be doing a contest. Yes. Between 2 and 4, I'm going to be answering your questions. Because mm -hmm. you can't expect people to just be sitting around on Facebook all day waiting for you to show up. So the point with the virtual parties is constant communication. Yes, constant communication and consistency. Yeah. Because I've learned that when I wasn't consistent, I lost a lot of customers online. So I created a work schedule for myself when I'm doing a, an online party. And I'm online, and I let my customers know exactly when I'm going to be online. And I think that's important. I think these are key points. Thank you so much, Emily. Because I think if you go to her meet on, you can really see the details more in her meet on because she can go through step by step. But one of the cool things about what she uh, does is, and you can also go to my private Facebook group, which is the official, what is it? I don't even know it because I have so many Facebook. Lauren's official online party page. Lauren's offic official, no, it's, it's actually uh, uh, Moda's official cosmetics, official p a private party now, right? We changed it. We changed it. Something like that. It, you'll find it. If you write and uh, 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 ask to be accepted to the group, we'll accept you. Uh, but it is not for people outside of Market America Motors because we talk about how you succeed. 
right. and we give you tips and tricks. So anyway, make yeah. sure you watch your, her meat on, because her meat on is great. But imagine having 90 to to $100, thank you, Emily, 90 exactly. to $100 thank you. extra, extra in sales per order without doing any work, with working in your pajamas. Working in your pajamas. Who else pays you to work in your pajamas? Think about that, guys. You're on Facebook anyway. I know that. I see you guys on there all the time. People are like, why isn't, I, I, I was joking the other day because I was playing trivia crack with Sue Guido, I told you, 2 a.m. And she saw me in the hall yesterday and she goes, how come you don't play trivia crack at two in the afternoon? I'm like, because I don't have time. I played at 2 a.m. so I can go to sleep. The only time I'm on Facebook is when I'm ready to go to bed. And I want to look to see what people say so I can comment, so I can respond to them, so I can engage in them. That's how I have over a million followers everywhere. Because I communicate with people. I'm always answering people, I'm talking to people. Most of my followers are not from this organization, although I wish you guys would follow me at Lauren Reitinger. <laughs> I wish you guys would follow me at Lauren Reitinger. The majority of them aren't from here. So I built that. You can do the same thing. There's no trick in it. We're doing the same thing with TLS parties right That's now. That's right. I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, let's think about like New Year's resolutions. What is everybody, like the number one thing that most people say on their New Year's resolution? I want to lose weight. Yeah. And where they're going to lose weight is very different than where they used to. Rather than going into, you know, you know, whether it be Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig or things like that, they were actually taking to social media. And the reason for that is, is, is that there have actually been numerous studies that have found because of the accountability and because of the daily log that social media provides them, that people are not only losing weight, they're losing inches, they're becoming more motivated, and they've got a support system that they never thought of existed. And so they're going to social media to really go and lose their weight and track the weight loss. So what we did was, was that we created the TLS Home Parties. Now here's a way, and Dennis and, Dennis and Sue, you know, talked about it on Thursday. Here is a way for you to now engage people on Facebook, build parties around weight loss, about selling lifestyle. You know, that this isn't just a weight loss, that this is a science. This is not just a fad. This is about the lifestyle. And you can host these TLS home parties and get on the board with it. And, and, and that's super key. Think about that for a second. Holding people accountable is what makes people successful. Mm -hmm. Right? When people lose weight, they need to be held accountable to somebody so they can have somebody to root them on, cheer them on, they hold themselves accountable. Online parties will work for fitness even better than motives. And we've had tremendous success. The question is, can we get you to do it? Dennis and Sue worked so hard on building the tools with Michael and Jean, but you have to use them. And like I said before, you're already on Facebook. So all you have to do is interact and share. Make a superstar at your party. Create a superstar at your party. Highlight somebody who's had success with TLS. Get them to come talk online about their success. Get them to interact about what they did, how they held themselves accountable. Get that to be the talk of the party. Trust me, you will sell products without selling. I don't ever sell anybody anything. I just talk. And when you talk about what you love with passion, you automatically sell. That's right. Trust me. Stop trying to sell everybody everything. Don't be pushy. Anything worth having is worth working for. Anything worth having is work, work, worth working for. 50% of people who get married today meet online. They don't just meet online, Marty and don't have to work at it, they have to work at it. By the way, you do have to have the initial date before you get married. You can't just meet the person online. You do have to have the date, you still have to do the romance. That's right. You still have to have make babies. That's right. Right? That's right. You want to tell them anything? Do I, need, do I want to tell them anything? Why does that maybe you want to tell them something? You mean I actually get to tell somebody my great news? I'm the only person who hasn't been able to tell anybody That's my great I news. That's why I thought I would let you tell it. Yes, I'm going to be a proud father to be.
So. I... <laughs> Which means that I have another child to spoil. <laughs> I think I cried more on that one just the other day when they called and told me I was just so happy because they've waited so long. Steve is one of those guys who really works hard at his marriage. And you know, the kind of guy that girls look up to. You know, I always had, was blessed with the greatest brothers in the world. Mark and Steve are the greatest brothers and I have a great husband. I always told my daughter, marry somebody who's like your father or your uncles because they'll always treat you well. And when you look up to them, I, Steve was always the guy who got married and he got married because he loved her, but he wanted to have kids. And I waited for this moment to happen, and it just happened. Thank you. And he's gonna be a dad. Thank you. And it's just a magical, magical time. And, and I, almost, I almost spilled the beans first, but then I remember I already told everybody backstage, so I figured I'd better let him tell everybody <laughs> here. He was like, okay. don't tell anybody, Lauren. I was like, I promise I won't. Then I went over to like Andrew. I was like, Andrew, you can't tell him I told you, but they're having a baby. <laughs> It's like I couldn't keep my mouth quiet. But you know, because we have lots of babies in our family, it made sense to do a DNA party too. That's a DNA right. party too. Now you don't have to have the virtual tool to do the DNA party, why? The virtual tool is kind of a trick. Yes, it works well. Yes, Michael and Jean are geniuses at creating it. But more importantly, all you have to do is use the shop box, which Jean created, which is one of my favorite tools that nobody ever uses. Here's all you do. You simply go on shop.com, you click Add to Shopbox. You're gonna go through these fast, Steve. You're gonna add these to Shopbox. Marty, you'll see how it drops right into the Shopbox. You manage your Shopbox page. This is all on your Shop.com page. You can choose the cover you want for your party. So in this particular case, I put joint, uh, tips, and, and, uh, tips to keep your baby happy and healthy. You get to choose how your Facebook page will look like, Marty. That's the page I want mine to look like. I added the products for my DNA that I want to be on my Facebook store party page. And I show them on Facebook. That's right. Now look what happens. So I can literally add my new Facebook store to my front page. As soon as I add that to my front page, here's what happens. Well, before I do that, by the way, I want to engage people for my party. So Marty, what I do is I talk about what are the things I want to do at my party? Well, I want to engage them. I say, hey, great ideas, five ways to keep your baby's skin soft this winter. Or up until eight, I'll give them facts. Up until age three, your child's skin is delicate and immature. It has a few uh, defenses that against harsh elements, cold wind, la, 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 la. I'm educating them. Then I'll play a game with, game with them. Here's a fun game. Do you know the top name of boys and girls that was chosen for the baby names in 2014? And I'll ask them to choose and they'll get points based off of who gets it right. And whoever gets the most points of the game, Marty, wins the prize from DNA. And this is how I interact. And then what happens is I put this up. And this is simple. I simply put up my, my new shop box party page. When they click on it, here's what they see. You'll see right here, it'll show the products, Marty, and they can scroll through the pages. Now here's why Shopbox works. You will get more conversions by keeping the shopping checkout on your Facebook rather than taking them to Motives or DNA. Here's why. Once they go to your website, they get lost. They can't decide. All I'm asking them to do is choose from a handful of products I've selected myself. I've personally curated these for them. I've made myself an expert to these people online. They're listening to what I'm saying. I know what to say. You need to know what to say. If you don't know what to say, copy my page. All you need to do is constantly educate people, make it fun, give them a selection of products to choose from. So if they want to purchase the DNA Miracle Chews, they can drop it to their cart right then and there. They can add a coupon code, because remember, in the back office of Unfranchise, if you click on coupon admin, is that correct, Mark? Coupon admin, we give you a code that you can use for the coupon. That code works in your shop box. Mm -hmm. It will automatically deduct the cost so you can still give them the discount like we do at the home party, Marty. The only difference is you don't have the virtual tool from the website, and I like this one just as much because they can check out on Facebook. It makes perfect sense. Folks, here's the point. We're growing. We're doing so much at once. You're already on Facebook. Steve and I know, we see you, you're already on Twitter. 
You're here for a weekend this reason. You need to change your thinking. If you go home from here, please go home with purpose and possibility. Please go home and make a difference in your life. You're here for a reason. Every one of you want to do this. We talked about this. We talked about this earlier the other day. Today, today is the oldest you've ever been and the youngest you'll ever be. And even the longest life is a short ride. Even the longest life is a short ride. Don't let anyone steal your dreams. You have got to do something about it. You had purpose before anyone had an opinion. You can change your life. All you have to do is take the things you've learned over the weekend, take the things you've learned, take what Steve and I talked to you about. That's why we're number, what, 46? 46. I mean, it's amazing to Because, I mean, the thing is, is that 46 out of the top 500 social influencers, the team, my team does a great job on a daily basis, but this is about being also powered by people. Let me go through some of the, pe the, some of the companies that we're ahead of. This is the actual list right here. So let me go through this list. We're number 46 top social influencers online. So let's That's talk about powerful. who we're ahead of. Nike, great shoes, not powered by people. Mm. Starbucks, great coffee, not powered by people. Apple, great products, not powered by people. Mac Cosmetics, not powered by people. Amway, not powered by our people. <laughs> the list goes on and on and on and on. We are getting out there. We're getting noticed. You know, to, uh, next month I'm actually going out to Facebook because we're going to talk about what we can do together to make a lot of great things and to become that well-known company. Are you ready? Are you